I'm Stephanie Quine with the Weekly Law Report. Here are our top stories this week. Lawyers acting for thalidomide victim Lynette Rowe secured a major victory against the drugs distributor last week. Slater and Gordon and Gordon Legal jointly represented Rowe, who was born without arms or legs after her mother took anti-nausea medication containing thalidomide. The multi-million dollar settlement will, will ensure Roe receives a high level of care for the rest of her life. More compensation claims are expected to follow. The release of generic top-level domain names is expected to spark a range of new cyber squatting disputes. Thousands of personalised domains like .apple and .hotmail are now up for grabs. L'Oreal wants .beauty, while Google and Amazon are vying for .app and .music. But domain name expert Ben Patrick has warned businesses to ensure that nobody is cyber squatting or scamming on an internet address that shouldn't belong to them. A former Norton Rose senior associate has left private practice in pursuit of greater work-life balance. Lee Pascoe left the restructuring and insolvency arm of Norton Rose ahead of a promotion to special counsel last month. Pascoe said she wanted a complete lifestyle change where she could freelance to Australian law firms and sole practitioners remotely and when needed without the overheads associated with putting her on staff full time. Pascoe said the idea is in its infancy in Australia due to a perception that legal freelancers are lawyers who cannot secure a position in a law firm. Former Minter Ellison Chief Financial Officer Craig Rainberg has been sentenced to 10 and a half years jail for stealing almost $2.7 million from his former firm. A South Australian District Court heard that the 47-year-old regularly stole from Minters over seven years. He used electronic transfers to direct partner funds into his own accounts. In sentencing, Judge Geoffrey Muke said that Rainberg was funding a lavish lifestyle of designer goods and luxury travel while showering his friends with gifts. Minters is expected to receive less than $50,000 in restitution. I'm Stephanie Quine, thanks for watching. I'll be back next Friday with more top stories in Australian law and business.